<clears throat> shalom, shalom. I'm back with another YouTube video. Shalom, everybody. Some quick morning message. I want to talk about three things or three principles or three elements that you need to become rich or successful in today's economy or in today's world, right? So three things, three principles um, that you, if you stand on, if you focus, these three things will make you rich. You can become wealthy. Even though today things are hard and it, 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 it may seem like you're in a worse situation than you were before. You know, you got bills piling up. Um, you got kids that's children that's um, getting ready to go off to college and you don't, you or should be going off to college and you don't know what you're going to do. You're going through a divorce right now. Your wife is taking everything or half of everything or your, your husband is leaving with everything or whatever, whatever your situation may, um, might be right now. You're waiting on a blessing from the most high. He made promise to you and you don't know what's taking so long. Your prayers seems to not be being heard right now. Um, you got health issues right now. You're, you're, you know, the doctor just told you, um, you only got six months to live or you may be losing a limb or your hair falling out or whatever, whatever the situation may be, right? I want you to see my eyes. You know, the eyes is a window to the soul. These three principles. Number one is vision. You have to have a vision. Without vision, people perish, as the scriptures say. Number one, right now, if you're the head of the household, or maybe you're a young man or a young, uh, a young woman and you want to help your, your parents out, and you see them struggling, and, you, and it hurts your heart. Every morning before you go to school, you got you to gotta see the stress on your mother's face. Maybe she may be a single parent. And you're a young man and you just want the best for your, your, your mother. You want to do something for your mother. That may be your, your, your biggest motivation right now. But you can't do nothing for yourself or nobody else if you don't have a vision. So number one, get a vision if you do not have a vision. In today's world, this is not um, like 30 years ago when our parents were growing up in in. in you know, I'm, I just took this new position. You know, I'm going to give you a little testimony or a little story. It's not a testimony, but a story, right? I took this new position with Spectrum. And, and by the way, I retire like every other year and I come out of retirement. I might get bored or, you know, I may need a couple of dollars or whatever it might be. Um, so I took this position as a retention specialist with Spectrum. And you know how you take a new job and you know you got all the managers they come in and, and give their their story or or, or or they speak about how great the company is so the individuals came in and all these these women and, and it was a couple men spoke about how they've been with spectrum for 20 30 years you know i'm a, that's that's pretty much that's more than half of my life i'm only 38 so i'm like man 30 years like that's a long time to be with a company. And I was just reflecting on their story that, you know, the company's been great. Like, man, they've been with this one company for 30 years. I haven't kept one job over two years. I don't stay with for over, <laughs> over two years. Uh, one year is a long time. And, it's, and he's like, and I'm like, yo, the reality then is not the reality today. Many of you individuals watching this video right now will not be with the same company for 30 years, 20 years, probably not even 10 years. Because a lot of these companies, I don't even believe have 10 years left. Or or in a sense of, you know, in America, you know, companies will leave here and, and go to other places and become 
successful because this 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 world is the first should be last and the last should be first. So the first world will become the third world and the third world will become the first world. Pick up that jewel right there. I just dropped it on you. It's free. So they gave a testimony. They've been with this company for so long, 30, 40 years, 30, 20, 30 years, whatever it's been. And now and day, you, you don't you don't have that type of time. Like you're not, you know, we don't have that type of time where you're gonna be with a company working for somebody for 20, 30 years and believe you're gonna be able to retire with a good pension and a 401k, whatever that might be. That's not that's not the reality these days. So we gotta we gotta we gotta stay focused on reality, and that's why number one principle you need is a vision. You must have a vision, and that vision must be aligned with today's reality, not what our our parents told us. Of, you know, go to school, get a degree, and you'll get a good job, and then you'll move up the corporate ladder. That's not the reality today, right? So have you a vision? Oh, well, um, man, King Hafi, I don't have a vision. Pray, fast, read scripture. Go out, go outside in the community. Look up in the sky, watch the stars, look at the moon. Go soak in the sun, get a vision. Number two, after you got your vision, the vision, you, you whatever it is, you locked in. You got a vision. You you want to, you know, um, whatever, whatever that vision may be. It got to be in reality. So don't don't have your vision. Your vision can't be in America, Babylon. Point blank, period. Whatever, wherever you you gonna go to Brazil or you gonna go to, you know, back to the motherland. Your vision has to be aligned with reality, knowing that this this. This nation, these Western nations, will fall based on judgment. Rome fell, Greece fell, the old Egypt fell, old Babylon fell, the Syrians, the Purge, the Medes, the um, um, the Zulu Kingdom, um, the Ethiopian Kingdom. They, they kingdoms come and go. That's just the reality of the situation. Um, so you got your vision. Number two. All right, number two. Innovation. Write this word down. Go look up the definition. Study the word innovation. You have to be able to innovate right now. You have to be able to take something that may be good or something that's bad and turn it into good. Something that's good and turn it into great. You have to be able to innovate. Systems, right? In Africa, we know systems don't work too good in, in Africa. And what I hear, there's not a lot of systems. So you have to be able to go into a place and bring some sort of innovation, a new way of doing things that works, a new way of doing things that will get the desired um, results. So you need to be innovative. You, you can't, we live in an age where people are doing things because they've been doing them for the past 20, 30, 40 years, but it, it's not being um, efficient or effective in today's world, in today's society, in today's economy. We have technology. You have AI now. AI is taking jobs. You know what I'm saying? Um, the education system. If you were a teacher, right? America's education system, especially K through 12, is has been um is behind the curve the classrooms look the same as they did 30 40 50 years ago except it may be some computers in them now right but they had computers back then too so you need to be able to innovate if you're a teacher going into a different country or leaving them be innovative bring some innovative some creative ideals into the business um space as an entrepreneur you have to have innovation you have to be innovated you you know what i mean like whatever it is you know what i'm saying like like i i use this as a as a small scale in business like um i used to be a drug dealer right and and a part of 
And back in the days when I was a drug dealer, we stood on a corner and people pulled up. They'll drive 30, 40 minutes, an hour to pull up and purchase the drug of choice, whatever that might be. You can't go stand on a corner today and expect somebody to pull up and purchase drugs off you. Why? Because everybody has cell phones. So now they'll call you and say, yo, meet me over here or come to my house. Back then, everybody didn't have a, drug dealers didn't have a cell phone. They might have a beeper. They didn't. So you, you know, you have to be innovative. You have to have a vehicle. You can't just go stand on a block. You got to be able to get to where you got to go. And that's just, and I use that just as a, as, as an example, because that applies to, um, today's, today's world. In, in business, the economy, that you have to be um, innovative. Um, whatever you might be, whatever you might be doing, is that if you got a small business, do you have um, exposure online? Do you have a, a website where people can Google you and search and look at reviews and um, different things of that nature? You know. Um, 30 years ago, you might not needed a, a, a website, you know, to, to, to operate your business and be successful, right? You, you might not, but today you, 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 you need a website. You need, you need um, money for advertising and marketing. You need, you need to be, you need to know about social media. You know, most buyers or potential customers are on social media apps, whether Facebook, Instagram, um, Snapchat, um, TikTok, whatever it might be. So innovation, after you got your vision, you locked in, you can see you're not going to perish. Your vision is going to take you somewhere. You bring in innovation. Now you have to be innovated on the product or service or ministry that you're bringing through, bringing forth. If you're a a, um, a preacher of the word, or you're bringing the basura, the good news, and you're and you're out as a fisherman of yacht, you have to be innovative, right? You have to. Nowadays, no, a lot of people are not going into physical spaces to get a word or a message. A lot of people are searching online. So are you utilizing the online platform such as YouTube, um, Hebrew Connect? Are you using these different platforms to get your message out there so people can come across the word that Yahuwah has put in your heart to speak? So you got to be innovative. This ain't the days where, where we, we, we in church, we left the churches now, we understand. We, we're not going to listen to no, to no man give us a, a feel-good message for an hour and send us home. And, and we we're still lost, desperate, and in, 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 in despair, right? So no, it, it, it's not it's it's not that day and age. So innovation is is key number two, and a final key key number three is future. After you brought brought innovation and, and you see systems or different business ideas how it can be done better and, and more uh, efficient and effectively and changing this and, and you're going to innovate this and you're going to do this that ain't never been done you're going to create this app that's not available today whatever the innovation move is you got to be thinking about the future you got to be able to predict trends right like stock market you know and um you know, um, the Forex and cryptocurrency, you have to, you have to think about the future. So, right. Another testimony. When I ran for office, um, for the fourth district of the common council seat in Syracuse, New York, 2017, one of my proposed ideals was to bring, introduce Bitcoin as a local currency where we open up, um, the local shops, stores, v vendors, restaurants, where everyone at once be begins to accept Bitcoin as a, 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 a payment method. 
and let's put Bitcoin machines throughout the city. The Syracuse.com said I was the best one for the position, but they shot down the ideal of bringing Bitcoin. You know what they said? That is too far. Uh, uh, um, that's in head. That's that's too far away. Like right now, Bitcoin wouldn't work. In but it was had a vision. It was innovative, and I was thinking about the future. So now, what is this, 23, 23, imagine if I got elected and I was able to implement the Bitcoin machines and the Bitcoin as currency about six years, six years later, you know how profitable and beneficial and effective Bitcoin would have been operating in the city of Syracuse right now? You know the, 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 the man, you know how much income that would have been producing in the city of Syracuse and what that would have been able to do for those that is impoverished in the city of Syracuse, and at the time it was ranked number one in poverty amongst African Americans, right? That's a that's bad. So you got to think about the future. Most people be caught up what won't work now, what they believe won't work now. But what if we started today? What it will look like three years from now? You know what I'm saying? So we got to think about the future. So now. What it looks like, we go to Africa, we go to, let me be more um, specific here. We go to the Gambia now. Let's think about Gambia. Gambia is a small um, um, Western coastal nation in Africa. We go to the Gambia now, where where the roads, the roads ain't all paved. Um, they don't have um, certain systems in place where it makes one easy to go in and create a business or do certain stuff build schools and hospitals and different things of that nature. But what if we go over there today and we start bringing systems over, innovative ways that we can pave the roads cost effectively today? What it looks like three years from now, five years from now, right? So we got to think about the future whenever we, when, when we're strategizing today, because we're expecting the kingdom to come, which is the kingdom is within us, right? So what the future looks like. And we, and those that read scripture, it tells us the beginning, the middle and the end. So we gotta be thinking futuristic. We gotta think about what the prophets foreseen, the prophecies, the prophecies are the future. And a lot of the things that we read about then, we are living in the future now, but there's still a future to come. So we gotta be futuristic. You know, when we, we, we can't think about today, because right now, say you're, you're, you're not thinking about the future. This is an example. You're not thinking about the future. So you're gonna build a business here in America, whatever it might be. You might be starting a, a, a daycare center. Let's, let's use that, right? You're starting a daycare center. And the future of America looks bleak and they're preparing for another lockdown per se, right? Because you, you, you know, you don't know everything, right? Just so pray, they're preparing for a lockdown. So right now, 2023, you're starting, you launching, you just kicked off your, 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 your daycare center, right? So parents are going to